Hello, Dr. Sunny here, and I wanted to take some time to show you the best workflows for our course. So I'm logged in here as a test student, and this allows me to see what you see in our learning management system. I'm here on the home page for the course, and I've explained this in the walkthrough tutorial, but I want to point out again to you that you have a to-do list here on the right side of the screen, and that's really helpful for knowing when the due dates are, some are in the morning, some are in the evening, to see what you've completed and what you still have coming up. When I look at this here in my to-do list, I can see that I have the extra credit communication drawings, which closed about four minutes ago for on-time submissions. Um, same thing with the introduction to public speaking quiz. And I need to still turn in my toolbox speech, complete the self-evaluation, and perhaps do the module one feedback, which is extra credit. Now the temptation is to click right into um, the heart of the matter, if you will, and try to work on the toolbox speech. But if you do this and you've not yet worked through the rest of the module where this is contained, what you'll see is there's not a lot of information there. Canvas does, however, give you the prerequisites to unlock that speech within your module. So let's go back to the home page and through tutorials here. And again, as always, the very important information and tools are on the home page. But what I want for you to do is click on the Start Here button. And this is going to take you to the start of the first module, the Introduction to Public Speaking module. Now there is an ungraded module that precedes this called Resources. And here you have um, an FAQ where you can see answers to frequently asked questions, or you can post non-personal questions to the class. There's the toolbox, which will also be reviewed as the first item in the first graded module. There are reports, which is a place for you to submit errors or issues that you have going in the class that are a personal nature. And then there are some links to my professional social media accounts. So once you know that those resources are available, you can go ahead and close the resources module. And let's instead focus on the toolbox module. So you'll see here on the right a green arrow. What this means is I have viewed this um, item in Canvas. But if I had not, I would click in and view this item. And this is the toolbox. This is there are a lot of helpful tools in here on how to get started in the course, how to perform lots of technical skills such as um, how to use Canvas, how to use the online tutoring, how to upload to YouTube, how to change your privacy settings so we can see your videos. And it also gives you a rundown of what you need to accomplish this week in the module. There are instructional videos that I've created and inserted to try to guide you along the way. This toolbox module will always be available to you at the top of the modules page. So if you need to come back and reference a lesson or a tutorial, it's very convenient and easy for you to do so. Once you've reviewed all of this information, then at the bottom of the page, you're going to click Next. This will take you to the syllabus for our course. And I'd like you to take some time to review the syllabus, both the policies, but also these advice from future student videos that I've included, which are going to give you a much more accurate view of the course from a student's perspective and suggestions on how to be successful with the syllabus policies. After you've read through the syllabus, which again, you can always come back to using the left menu bar here in Canvas. Your so as you can see, I've now completed the syllabus quiz, and Canvas gives me information on my results in this quiz. I can see that I took three minutes to take the quiz, and my score was 95 out of 100. One thing that you might find useful when you are taking these quizzes if you miss an answer, often I've given you a comment 
on that answer and why it's not correct. And this can help you sort of learn from your mistakes and make sure you have the right information. Now that I'm finished with that quiz, I'm going to click Next and move on through the module. And what I get here is the first chapter that you are assigned in the Introduction to Public Speaking and the Public Speaking Project. And I've embedded this as a PDF that will load in Canvas and on your phone. You have to do a little pinching and zooming on your phone, but it's workable if you turn it to horizontal orientation. Alternately, you're able to download the PDF. And remember, you can always go back into the syllabus and you can directly link to the online site for the text, thepublicspeakingproject.org, if this doesn't work for you in this context. After you've read this chapter, you'll click Next. And you'll see that the next thing is to take the Introduction to Public Speaking quiz. So again, I'm going to click Take the Quiz. And I'm going to begin taking this quiz. And this format is something you will see often in quizzes in this course. This is a matching section where you choose the correct definition for the term that is displayed. I'm going to take this quiz and I'll be right back to continue your work. So you can see that Susie's student didn't do so well on this quiz, 40 out of 100, but she is able to see the correct answers for the questions she missed, or my comments that I type in when you miss a question, so you can know why you missed it and what the correct answer is. Sometimes I even link you back to the Public Speaking Project to show you where that information came from. But now that she's taken the second quiz, we can continue moving forward in the module. And the next section in the module is a lesson on the communication cycle. So you'll need to both watch these videos, which are closed captioning, if that is a service that you need, and review this graphic. Now I'm showing you this in part so that you can see that there are these graphics in our course. If you're exclusively accessing this on a phone, that can be wonderful, and I do that quite often, especially when traveling. But there are limitations to what can be loaded in the Canvas app. Once I continue this lesson, I again press the next button to move forward, and I see that I've unlocked a bonus. In this bonus, you are encouraged to draw the communication cycle and upload it. Some students choose to do this digitally, some students to choose to do this in an analog way, and that's up to you. The real point of this extra credit is to help you learn to embed images correctly and with the right orientation in Canvas. And I'm really impressed, guys. These are some fun drawings. So after you submit that optional extra credit, you then have unlocked the toolbox speech assignment. So the way that our speeches work is they are discussions. And there are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that most people are able to contribute to discussions on their phones or tablets. The other reason is in our class, we're trying to promote um, a, a sense of group connectiveness and so I want you to be able to see your classmates speeches this is important because you're going to be peer evaluating them in each speech you'll see a graphic to begin with that sums up the speech with for you and you're also going to see your learning objectives a description of the assignment sample student submissions and then the specific steps that you need to move through in order to complete this speech. I would encourage you not to rush through this part because these step-by-step -step instructions have everything you need to read and know to perform this speech correctly. And when you're ready to post, you'll hit reply. You will use the small drop-down arrow here to choose YouTube. And then you will insert either the URL or the name of your YouTube video in this box and hit search and hopefully it will find it. The bad news is sometimes it doesn't find it. And if that happens to you, there's another way that you can do this, which is to click a link and put that URL 
from YouTube to share here and insert link and it will insert a preview of that embed. It'll be much smaller, but that is a backup plan if you are unable to do it with the external tool for YouTube. Remember when you post that speech link, you're going to add a 150 word self evaluation to your speech and you'll want to return within a couple of days and provide peer evaluations for three classmates by replying to their speech. Now I'm just going to type test here and we're going to pretend that Susie student has submitted her link and her self evaluation there. On the next page, you'll get a prompt for the self evaluation. Now you're not able to submit to this actual assignment because where you'll be submitting your self evaluation is here where you've posted your speech video. This is just a place for me to grade your self evaluation and also a place for you to see the rubric on how your self evaluation will be graded. And that is my phone. about that phone call, things happen. But looking at the self-evaluation rubric, you'll note in our class that all graded assignments have a rubric. And this is a very important tool for you to see how your submissions will be evaluated. Once I've graded your self-evaluation that you posted back here in the toolbox speech, you'll be able to come to the self-evaluation assignment to see what happened if perhaps points were taken off. On the next page is a similar assignment, which is the peer evaluation. As with the self evaluation, you will reply to your classmates in the actual speech discussion board where you post your embedded link in your self evaluation. But you can come here to the peer evaluation to again see the rubric and how you will be assessed. And after I've graded you, you'll be able to come here to see comments or to see where you lost points. I encourage you to set up notifications in Canvas so you can see comments from me on assignments such as this, because often if you're missing one of your three peer evaluations before a deadline, I will make a note of that so you know exactly what you need to do to continue. Once you have finished the toolbox peer evaluation, you then unlock a extra credit and it's transcribing your speech for closed captioning. There are videos here from both from a student on the experience of this and a brief tutorial on how to transcribe your captions in YouTube. And this is something you can do at the time when you add titles, descriptions, and tags to your video. The final item in this module is the feedback survey. And this is a completely anonymous survey that allows you to give feedback on your experience of the first module. And so there are many questions in this that you will work through. And I am going to pause there and answer these questions. So as you can see, Susie's student has taken the syllabus quiz now and earned the extra credit points for completing this. And when you click Next, you're going to be on the first page of the Glossophobia module. And this is the Glossophobia lesson. Now, what I suggest is that you then go back to modules. because modules is something of a map for you for our course and knowing the information that you need to complete. Once you've completed a module such as the first one, you can shrink it down. And you'll see a check mark here, completed all items, which is good because that is a prerequisite to the glossophobia module. So one thing I recommend to you if you are unable to see materials in a module is to confirm that you have completed everything in the preceding module. And as you can see here now, the process is repeated starting with the lesson, the discussion post, a reading, and a quiz. All of these things are required. It's required you complete them before you can continue moving forward and seeing the information in your glossophobia speech. For these reasons, I recommend that you 
definitely make a plan for time management in our class because with these speeches, it's not enough just to unlock them by the day of the deadline. You're going to need several days to feel confident about writing, preparing, practicing, and recording your speech, and also the process of uploading and embedding the link, which for many of you might be new, but even for people who, for them, that's old hat, already know that uploads can take quite some time. I hope this has been a helpful walkthrough through this module. One other note, you can click on grades and you can follow your grades in the course. And I'd like to show you on this, if it will load, that not only can you see your grades, and here you can see your grades for these quizzes, but you can also see comments from me on anything that is a comment included with your assignment. This becomes especially helpful in speeches where I often leave comments to students even before deadline trying to help you complete all of the work on time. If you have any other qu questions or suggestions for videos, please let me know.